Welcome everybody to another SkySieve tutorial. Today I'm going to take you through a 10 minute demonstration of the SkySieve Beam program. So SkySieve Beam is a powerful yet easy to use piece of software that allows you to analyze one dimensional beams. So you can build some really complicated beams uh, in a matter of minutes uh, and get the analysis results that you need. So to access this, it's just through skysieve.com forward slash login. So once you log in, um, there's just a little option here to hit Beam and that'll actually open up your Beam software. So here you can find our interface. It's, it's quite an easy to find, easy to, to use interface. You can see where I need to add all my uh, elements of my structure. I can control my units here. So for today, I'm going to use uh, imperial units, but I do have metrics, so I can go kilonewtons meters. But today, I'm just going to stick to kip and feet. And we can add cross sections to our beams here as well. And this is available under any of our paid programs. So <clears throat> I'm just going to start with the simple beam. And I'll add a 30 foot span beam. And you can see there it's, it's already built it within our graphical interface. Next, I'm going to add a couple supports. So I might do a simple supported beam at first and put a roller. And I'm just putting the, the length at which, how far along the, uh, the beam that the, uh, the second support occurs. And just to show the, the kind of power of the software, I will add a fixed support at the edge there as well. So you can do any sorts of indeterminate beams as well. So after I've added my supports, I want to add some point loads. And I can add point loads downwards, upwards, or even angled. So I'll put a couple point loads in. Um, one, I'll do it in mid-span of that first uh, section. And two kit feet down. Then I'll add another point load. And this one I'll actually angle, so just to show you how the angling works as well. And I'll do this at 22.5 feet. A little bit stronger and 45 degrees off center. So you can see there that it's, it's showing it, and it's actually showing the, uh, the equivalent load there, or the, the vector load there. Next, you can add some moments. Um, so again, you've got your both directions that you can apply these moments in, and maybe I'll add, apply this at two feet across, and something like feet. And finally, I can add a distributed load. So you can do um, kind of a, variation like they don't have to be uniform so I can do from say 2 to maybe 28 so spanning almost the whole length of the beam and I'll start from say 1 kip foot to 2 kip feet and you can see that that's now drawn in you can also move it around Every, anything any labels are, are movable and this is on our results page as well which allows you to really visualize what's happening in that, in that uh, particular structure um, everything is editable as well by clicking, so I can just click this and maybe I want to move the load across a little bit to 9 foot. So you can work really quickly to, to sort of change these uh, these values and, and iterate on, uh, on your design. Finally, I'll add a cross section. So obviously we want to give this section um, some sort of properties. And I'm going to open up our section builder. So this is a SkySieve section builder. So it is really, really powerful in terms of what you can do. So I can load some templates. Um, some preset templates and, and you know change the dimensions just through here I can you know, add that to 10 inches and, and make those changes there um, otherwise I can do all sorts of um, other operations uh, through this, this right side here so we can change the dimensions the same way I've changed through the, the graph I can actually do it through the forms here or I can even rotate uh, so maybe rotate by 20 degrees and I can translate in the Z and the Y so Z being across five inches and Y being up five inches. Uh, you can also do other operations like mirror it in the Z via its uh, Z axis or its Y axis. So you can really build some custom, um, real, real custom custom uh, directional shapes with your, with your uh, beam elements, sorry, with your cross sections there. Um, you can also build up beam. So I can actually add, say I've got uh, two channels and they are Opposite, I can actually add a second channel. I can see that it's been added to my module there. And I can rotate that, yeah, Y, and then sort of move it across. Oops, sorry. And you can sort of see how you can build, um, you know, built up sections, and you can even change this. So maybe one side is change the material, so one side is steel, the other side is concrete, something like that. You have all that available to you. We've also got a fully inclusive database, so you can load 
uh, from American AIC tables, um, for instance. We've got a whole range of shapes here that we can use. So it allows you to work really quickly where you don't have to transfer the uh, dimensions in. You can just load from a pre-existing database. Finally, you can add all sorts of custom shapes. So I won't go too far into this detail, but you can build a, a point shape, something like that, where you've got your X, Y coordinates, a line shape, uh, where you can put in your lines there. And this is just adding them as I go along. And import. I can even import a DXF file. So I can do all sorts of, um, um, any, any sort of shape that comes across uh, my table, I, I can, I'm really able to build that out. Um, and it really shows the power of this section builder that's actually throughout all our other programs as well. And finally, you can save and load um, your section. So if it is a section that you use quite frequently, um, you can just save it here and your, the entire, <clears throat> if you're on an enterprise account, your whole team can actually use that, that, um, that section that you've built and you can use it on other projects or other pieces of software as well. But for now, I'm happy with that. I've loaded it from the table and that's the beam that I want to use uh, for my structure. So I'm going to hit, so I can hit calculate and this will allow me to evaluate the results to make sure they're correct and they look right. And if I'm happy with that, I can hit submit. And it's actually running an FEA um, analysis on that section. So you're getting very, very accurate cross-section results. So finally, I'm ready to solve. Um, you know, I've, I've kind of taken my time to explain this, but I could have built this model out in a matter of less than a minute, really. Um, you know, add the beam, support, point loads, add my cross-section, and I'm ready to solve. Uh, so it just shows how, how quickly you're able to build these structures and get the results that you need uh, in, in a matter of minutes. And, and it's a really great tool for double-checking your work or even preliminary design before you jump into a full FEA model uh, and things like that. You can get your, you know, your, your accurate, um, quick analysis results and use them to form the basis of your design. So I'm ready to solve, so I'm going to hit solve. Okay, so here we have our result output page. So here you'll see a, a brief summary of all the results that we need for our analysis. So the first part is the uh, free body diagram. So we can see here that we have... Um, uh, just a simplified version of all the loads and the the reactions that supports it that have been um, that have been solved during the analysis. And I can actually click and drag um, again all these elements um, to to view them in a cleaner manner. I can also turn on my equivalent loads, so I can actually break this uh, three kip foot um, directional load here into x and y components, um, as well as bring in the um, the equivalent loads of these uh, distributed load here. Um, to those two forces. Um, then scrolling down, I have our beam section. So I can see what shape was used, what material was used, the Young's modulus of that. So just a summary of the beam section, including the geometric properties um, and some of the bending shear properties that were used in the calculations. So it just allows me to review what section um, is being used for this particular beam. Next we have our shear force diagram. So it's presented in a very clean manner. Um, we can see the, the lines and the, the various parts of the of the beam analysis that have been performed. So I can see one is corresponding to this shear force equation here. So it actually gives you a breakdown of the shear force equations um, across the whole span of the beam. And I can even um, identify uh, the analysis results at any point across the span of the beam. So this is a 30 foot span. Maybe I want to look at what's happening at the mid span there. And I can see at 15 feet, um, we've got a negative eight kip uh, shear force at that location. So quite similarly we have um, the bending moment diagram as well. So again in a very clean format I can move these labels around if I need to see what, what's happening in those areas and quite the same as the shear force diagram we have the, the equations, we have the locations at any point across the beam you can calculate the bending moment force at that location. And we also uh, allow the user to reverse the BMD sign convention so some people might prefer working um, or more comfortable working with with this sign convention as opposed to our default and you can change that there just by toggling that button. Another great feature we have is our hand calculation module so you, you might have noticed that there's these little drop down um, segments here under all the graphs and you can actually open up hand calculations. You can also open up from here from the task from the toolbar and it actually goes through an in-depth analysis of um, how we've calculated the reactions and the shear force and it actually takes you through a step-by-step -step guide with hand calculations as well. So you can actually track your progress or track the progress of the software to review the, the calculations. And, and it's done in a very easy to understand manner. And you can just go step-by-step -step through each of the, 
the cutoffs that we've done and where we've um, how we've calculated these equations that are then um, included within this final area. Then we have our vertical deflection curves, so these are elastic curves, and it shows the um, the points of the each span across um, the max and mins of the of the spans of the, of the beam, and we can see that uh, we've got the max and mins here and the locations of where they occur for that information. Again, same with rotational displacement, looking at the max and mins and where they where they occur across the span of the beam. Next, we have the uh, 3D render and the coloured contoured results. So we can actually review the structure, what it looks like in 3D space. And I can toggle on perspective mode just to review what that looks like. And just to ensure that I've got my dimensions right. So if you see a very um, kind of short span, but a very large cross section, you might realise that you've built the, the structure incorrect or the, the, the section incorrectly. And you can toggle on your results here as well. So you can actually review the results uh, and, and easily identify the, the critical parts of your design just based on the color, um, the color contoured results that we're displaying there. So I might look at deflection and can see the max deflection is occurring in the blue at minus uh, 0.6 of an inch. And I can even deflect that into true. So I can see, okay, that, that seems pretty reasonable. That uh, 0.6 across 30 foot span is a very reasonable deflection to have. And I can even um, auto scale that to really exaggerate that that deflection. So now it allows me just if I've got any hinge hinge connections or supports, just to make sure that that's behaving in a way that I would expect it to. And I might include leave that on so I can include that in my report. Finally, we have our stress results. So here we've got a very condensed, simplified table that just shows you your maximum in bending and shear for uh, shear stresses. So I can see the positive, negative, the tension, compression stresses, and it, it allows me to really quickly identify. Um, some critical metrics that I might need to base my design on. So I can see here that um, we've got a, a maximum tension stress of 20,000 psi, and that's occurring at 20 foot across the span. So just looking up here, um, it looks like where my support is at 20, and that, sound, that sounds pretty reasonable. Sounds about right. Then I'm getting my max tension and compression uh, stresses uh, is in within that location. Same with the stress as well, and I can see. It, quickly, that that 19,000 psi, you know, might take yield the stress, the yield stress of steel and tension might be, you know, 30,000 psi, for instance. It allows me to really quickly make that decision on whether that's um, failing by my criteria or that's a safe design. So this is where that kind of quick iteration, because you know, I can quickly go back to my beam setup and you know, maybe move this support somewhere closer and resolve. And quickly go down now and check again just to see what effect that's had on my stress and I can see now that the stress has calmed down a little bit that might be a more reasonable uh, approach to where I want to put my uh, position my supports uh, it just makes that iteration very quick if you're coming up with those final those quick double checks or those final designs and again I might want to toggle on another result to include here uh, sometimes you have to toggle on and off and I can see now that my, um, obviously my sections become a little different. I've got more negative force. And I might want to go back up and review the effect that this has had on my um, deflection. I can see now that it's actually deflecting more across both spans and my actual peak deflection has moved here to the right side now, I've balanced out either end and my deflection has actually come down a lot as well from 0.6 inch to 0.13 inch. And the final step I might want to take is actually produce this as a PDF report. So I can just go under output, I can save as an image or a printable version, uh, but m most likely you want to use a PDF report. And I can actually select which parts of my analysis I want to include in this report. So maybe I want to include the hand calculations for both uh, BMD and SFDs, um, deflection, whatever is important to my des particular design I can include within the report. It'll just take a second there to generate, and once that's generated, it should pop up on my screen. So it's actually saving locally to my uh, to my local drive, and there it is. So we here is our beam analysis report. 
So I can see if under the enterprise account you have your logo there. So it's again a very professional manner uh, with a bit of marketing for you as well to show where this document came from, who ran this analysis and and how, how that's presented. Um, so Beam analysis report, the time at which the report was run. Um, it got a free body diagram here so you can review what loads have been applied to the structure and, and the supports and, and etc. Uh, I could have assigned a job name and a designer. Um, I didn't fit this particular structure. And then what's included, so sort of table of contents. And I got a free body diagram. So basically everything in the report, just with some a blank space below just to do hand calculations or make notes. Uh, beam section. Then we've got our shear force diagram. If there's any hand calculations, if I included them in within my report, they'd be below here. Otherwise, I, again, I can use this space for my own uh, notes. Any moment diagram. So it's the exact report that we've just reviewed, uh, just been presented in PDF format. <clears throat> so I've got my deflection curves, my rotational displacement, my colored contour results, and then, of course, my stress results. So this might be an area that I want to tick off and, and say that it's been double-checked. Um, and, you know, use this as the, for my own um, records or maybe use this to submit to to wherever I need to submit it or pass it on to another engineer, just in a, a professional format, which is a PDF. So that concludes the, the demonstration for the Beam software. So this is available under all of our paid accounts. So student, professional and enterprise um, all have access to all the functionality that I've just gone through in this demo. So if you have any questions, feel free to email us at info at skysiv.com. Otherwise, visit us online at www.skysiv.com. Thank you.